Good afternoon and welcome to the Real Time Crime Center at the Albuquerque Police Department. My name is Scott Darnell, Director of the Albuquerque Innovation Team. Uh, the ABQI team, as we are known, is a city-affiliated research and innovation team that assists the city and its various partners inside and outside of government with overcoming pressing community challenges. Currently, we're partnering with the organizations that are represented here today and others to conduct groundbreaking research on offender characteristics and behavior, as well as on crime concentration in our community. The work is funded by Bloomberg Philanthropies through a grant secured by Mayor Barry, and we hope to provide useful information and additional capacity to our justice system partners as we seek to overcome together the crime challenges that we face. Today represents a key moment of collaboration between Albuquerque's and Bernalillo County's police and prosecutors, and it marks an initial step forward in using data and analytics to, in this case, identify, track through the criminal justice system, apprehend when necessary, and aggressively prosecute some of our counties and cities' most serious habitual offenders. And this is, of course, an important task given the spike in crime that we've seen in recent years following several of the lowest crime rate years on record. To talk about the ALERT initiative, which stands for Analysis-Led Recidivism Team, I'm happy to introduce Albuquerque's Mayor, Richard Berry. Thanks, Scott. Well, good afternoon. This is a, this is a good day for our community, uh, and I'm going to tell you a couple of reasons why I believe that to be true. But first and foremost, it's a good day because you're seeing a multi-jurisdictional effort here. Uh, you've got the Albuquerque Police Department. You've got our, our new district attorney here. You've got the FBI uh, here, and you've got the Sheriff's Department here. And we're here because there are certain things that we know that need to be positively impacted. We know, as Scott said, that after a number of years of low crime rates, we had a spike in certain areas of crime in our community. And we know that our community wants action. We know that we want action. We also know that we're seeing some unprecedented changes in the criminal justice system. And we know that we have partners within the system that are resource constrained with a high workload and most importantly, we know that we have constituents that want to be, be safe in their community and they want us to come up with innovative ways to tackle crime. And that's what we're here to do today. I was told as a young man, you can work hard and you can work smart. And when you work hard like, like these folks do and you work smart, uh, good things are going to happen. And that's why we're announcing this new program today to better utilize the data that we have always had but haven't always been able to um, resource like we needed to to address repeat offender issues in the city of Albuquerque and in Bernalillo County. As I said, I'm joined by Raul Torres. Uh, great partnerships, by the way, going on between uh, Chief Eden, uh, Raul, and his crew at the District Attorney's Office. Uh, partnerships that I, that I haven't seen during my time as mayor, so I, I want to congratulate everybody there. Uh, Bernal County uh, uh, Sheriff's Department as well, special agent in charge of the FBI, Terry Wade. Thank you, Terry, for joining us here today. So the formation of this new multi-agency team is designed to help identify, number one, to track through the criminal justice system, to apprehend when necessary, and to aggressively prosecute repeat offenders in the city of Albuquerque. This announcement comes on the heels of Albuquerque being named as the sixth most digital city in America. That is a very intentional effort that we've gone about to make sure that Albuquerque is digitally connected and a national leader. And this is just one more way that we can use those capabilities in the city to help positively impact our community. We are working smarter, as I said earlier, to leverage multiple sources of open data and court records to better inform the criminal justice process. And that is a complicated process and there are many moving parts, there are many partners. Over the last several months, the Albuquerque I team, led by Scott Darnell, uh, who works out of my office at City Hall, a Bloomberg initiative housed, as I said, in my office, has been meeting with criminal justice partners and different agencies to identify to how best utilize this data at our disposal to fight crime. We considered how to better arm judges and prosecutors with even more information so they can make more informed decisions on the people who they find themselves uh, dealing with in their courtrooms. From these conversations, the analysis-led recidivism team, we call it ALERT, this is it behind me, was born. 
The alert is a partnership between APD, the Second Judicial District Attorney's Office, Bernalillo County Sheriff's Office, and the FBI. In October, I announced that the city would hire several people to more closely monitor serious offenders and make their way as they wait, make their way through the criminal justice system. Uh, today, uh, we have Stephanie and Kaylee here with us. They are working out of APD's Real Time Crime Center, and they are the team that is working to identify repeat offenders based on several things. Number one, their history of felony arrests, their propensity for failing to make court appearances, and the type of criminal activity that they engage in, such as violent crimes or certain categories of crime that are currently spiking in Bernalillo County and the city of Albuquerque, things like auto theft. At or before, when one of these identified serious repeat offenders is arrested, this team has created an alert system that immediately notifies our district attorney's office so the prosecutors can give the offender's case a high priority status and argue for stricter conditions of release in front of judges for no bond holds for circumstances that warrant it. We will also include a new piece of information and that is how many times the offender's fingerprints have been found at crime scenes. As part of this process, a repeat offender analysis will prepare extensive background packages for prosecutors in these cases in order to provide judges with a detailed understanding of each criminal's history, offender's criminal history, so that they can best utilize their limited resources. These packets will include information based on prior arrest, prior convictions, specific details of crimes for which the offender has been arrested, relevant details of past crimes, failure to appear history, and notifications about whether law enforcement believes the offender is connected to any other crimes, such as through the fingerprint records. Additionally, if a warrant is issued for an identified serious repeat offender, fugitive apprehension teams from the participating law enforcement agencies will be notified and efforts will be made to locate and arrest these individuals before they can do more harm in our community. The new alert team will meet once a week in person to discuss and share the most current information about the, the uh, identified serious repeat offenders, including who has upcoming court dates, who has outstanding warrants, and who was just released from jail, among other things. We believe that this new approach represents an important collaboration between law enforcement and prosecutors to effectively address crime challenges by focusing our limited resources and attention on serious offenders who are committing a significant amount of crime against our families, our businesses, and our community. So I'm here today uh, as a grateful mayor uh, because we have a district attorney, an FBI special agent, a chief of police, a sheriff, men and women in both the sheriff's department and the Albuquerque Police Department who are out there every single day working hard to keep our families safe. They are risking their lives to do that. And I'm happy that we're able to announce that we have a way now through data collection and being smart about law enforcement and sharing data and working with our friends and our colleagues in the criminal justice system uh, to positively impact outcomes uh, for the city of Albuquerque and our families. So uh, I want to thank everybody that is here today and I'll turn it back to Scott. Thank you, Mayor. And as the Mayor mentioned, the alert team will be staffed and supported here at the Real-Time Crime Center and uh, with its two new repeat offender analysts in particular. And I think it's important to recognize the work that they have done and are doing and will continue to do with this particular effort. It's been several months uh, in the making and uh, the Real-Time Crime Center manager here, TJ Wilhelm, Sarah Masick is here, Kaylee Otero, Stephanie Pepin, Kara Mosley, Kate Rosoff, I think it's important for us to thank them for their work and give them a hand. And of course, a critical feature, as the mayor noted, of this effort is the collaboration that will take place between law enforcement and the district attorney's office. And we have a district attorney who wants to use data analytics to prioritize his prosecutorial resources on high-risk offenders who threaten our community and cause a disproportionate amount of the criminal activity that occurs here. An alert is certainly a first step, and I would say a very important step, in that process. I'm pleased to introduce District Attorney Raul Torres. So first I'd like to, to thank the mayor and, and congratulate and thank the city of Albuquerque, the chief of police, and the other law enforcement partners that are assembled here today. The establishment of this alert system is going to go a long way towards improving the information sharing, the communication, and help us prioritize the most serious and dangerous offenders in the community and get them out of this community. 
I know everyone here um, cares deeply about um, public safety and about the future that we are building for our kids, the future that we are building for this community. And it's absolutely essential that we um, innovate, that we think differently, and that we adopt a truly smart um, strategy on crime reduction in this community. The alert system that you're seeing here today has been a centerpiece of the data-driven strategies that have, that have proven um, in, that have been proven in New York City and San Francisco and other major metropolitan areas, a data-driven and intelligence-driven approach to crime reduction is exactly the kind of approach that we need. As the mayor mentioned, um, we live um, in an era of constrained resources. We, we don't have all the resources that we need in, in the public safety context in terms of, at least with regard to the prosecutors that we have available to fight the level of crime that we have. But we still have an obligation to use the resources that we do have wisely. And that requires us to make tough, hard judgments about who the most dangerous offenders are. And this intelligence-driven approach focuses on the 20% of the criminal population that's responsible for 80% of the, of the crime, specifically the violent crime that is committed in this community. And it's our strong belief that by focusing our limited resources first on those individuals, we will be able to, to turn the tide on rising crime, make this a safer community, and, and really lead the way not only for the rest of the state, but for the country in terms of developing a criminal justice system that isn't just tough, but it's also smart. So I want to thank the other stakeholders who are here today and uh, tell you how uh, enthusiastic we are that the city of Albuquerque has, has taken um, this important first step. And we look forward to building on these efforts in the years to come. Thank you. Thank you, District Attorney. We appreciate the collaboration uh, and involvement from uh, uh, Chief Deputy District Attorney Chuck Barth. I saw him here earlier, as well as Chief of uh, Policy and Planning uh, Adolfo Mendez as well. Both been very helpful. You know, several months ago, the concept of what this team would do, how it could operate, how it would be staffed, was developed in large part by our next speaker who throughout his extensive law enforcement career has put together or worked within a number of multi-agency crime fighting teams. And I know he'll talk about how this team is unique and different uh, in certain respects and what it will mean for the safety of the residents of Albuquerque and Bernalillo County. So let's welcome Albuquerque Police Department Chief Gordon Eaton. Well, first of all, I, I want to say thank you to all of our partners. We wouldn't be here today if it wasn't uh, for their willingness to cooperate with us to come up with some great solutions. And the reason I look at uh, the, our district attorney is this, is beginning in November of last year, Every uh, Mr. Torres or a member from his team has attended our Tuesday crime briefings. They have not missed a single briefing. And every Tuesday, due to the hard work of the men and women that work in the real-time crime center, we look at every crime that's been committed in the city of Albuquerque. We look for common threads, common themes. And at the end of the, that one-hour meeting, we go out with action plans on what to do. About uh, probably the beginning of this year, I, I felt that there was a void in what we were doing and felt that there was much more we could do. And I had a great opportunity to sit down with Deputy Chief Eric Garcia and TJ Wilhelm and put our thoughts down on paper on what we could do to expand what we do every single week to help make our community safer. It started out uh, just as a simple piece of paper and it's grown to what it is today, the alert system. I remember the, the meeting that we had when I turned to uh, our district attorney and to Mr. Chuck Barth and I said, are we ready to bring in the sheriff's department? They said, absolutely. And I thank you for being here and attending every single Tuesday meeting and being with us as we develop this. That same conversation occurred a few weeks later when I said, are we ready to bring in our federal partners? We all agreed that we needed to bring in the Federal Bureau of Investigation because of their long stand, their long uh, history 
and protecting the streets through many initiatives that were developed through Department of Justice. And I called Terry Wade and I asked Terry, we would like you to be part of this. And since that time, the FBI has been here for every single meeting. It truly is a collaborative effort. It really is. And I want to thank the men and women of the Albuquerque Police Department, TJ, for the great work that your people did. We couldn't have done it without your support, Mr. District Attorney. And thank you for being a true public safety partner. And to the Sheriff's Department, I think I already said the men and women of the Albuquerque Police Department, but more important, when I said to the mayor what we were doing and we were ready to do it, he said, what can I do to help? And there were so many resources that were given to not only the department, but to this group that meets every Tuesday. It's a group of detectives. It's a group of people that look and do an analysis on every single crime that occurs in this city. It's their hard work and their dedication, and that's why we're here today. But it's truly a collaborative effort. There's one silent partner that's not here today, and they're not here today on purpose, because they always work behind the scenes. They've been with the Albuquerque Police Department for over 35 years. They've helped our community solve many crimes, and that is Crime Stoppers. Crime Stoppers is such an important part of this meeting. But they're here today, or they're not here today, because they truly are a silent partner. And we thank them for the great work that they do. Alert is a simple concept. I've already talked to you about it. I've also talked to other people about it. But it's one that I'm proud of. Why? Because like Crime Stoppers was born in Albuquerque, New Mexico, Alert is born in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And I truly believe that not only will Albuquerque benefit from this, but we've also included police departments from Farmington and Hobbs who have witnessed what we do every single Tuesday, how we put the information together, and how we work together as a team. It's a great group of people with great leadership skills, and I'm truly honored to be just a small part of this. So thanks to each and every one of our partners for the great work that you do every single day. Thank you, Chief. Uh, and, and many of the investigators, prosecutors, officers who are a part of the alert briefings are here in the room at the desks to the right or the desks to the back. This is the room where the alert briefings are held. And in fact, uh, as soon as this is, is uh, concluded, we'll be having an alert briefing uh, today. Uh, just to reiterate, when a, an identified serious repeat offender is arrested uh, in Albuquerque or Bernalillo County, because of this new system, the Real-Time Crime Center will be able to immediately notify the district attorney that the person is in custody and provide them with a, an extensive informational background package on the offender that includes information that uh, the district attorney and his office currently does not receive uh, from law enforcement and therefore the judge uh, hearing the offender's uh, defendant's case does not currently hear from prosecutors who are appearing before uh, the judge. Uh, also, if any of these identified serious offenders have outstanding warrants, uh, because of this multi-agency team, uh, the fugitive apprehension teams will be immediately notified of the issuance of a warrant for one of these offenders, and they will work together uh, to immediately track uh, the person down and bring the person into uh, uh, custody. And then for the uh, entire group of identified serious uh, repeat offenders, as they move through the justice system, this multi-agency team will know where they move through that justice system. When they're released from jail, when their upcoming court hearings uh, are, are held, it's a very intentional approach to making sure that all of the necessary partners understand where uh, some of our most serious uh, criminal actors are um, in the justice system and in the community at any point in time. Our next speaker is from the Bernalillo County Sheriff's Office, whose partnership on this project has been, as the Chief described, and will continue to be very important to its success. Captain Josh Kingsbury, Criminal Investigations Division, is with us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, on behalf of Sheriff Gonzalez, thank you for having the Sheriff's Department here this afternoon. We, we appreciate it. Um, in this day and age of of departments not only 
the Sheriff's Department, but APD and, and, and the FBI having to do more with less. It's, it's important, it's imperative for us to be able to maximize our resources in a way that, that we haven't utilized them in the past. Um, the key to this program is, is the intelligence-based policing uh, that, we're, that we're getting into and the sharing of information between departments, uh, not only in law enforcement, but with the district attorney and our federal partners as well. Um, it's, uh, it's refreshing. I've been here about 21 years, and it's refreshing to, to work with the district attorney's office that has is, that is helped take the lead on, on trying to reform some of the ways in which we uh, combat crime. And as, as we all know, a large part of the crime here in Albuquerque is committed by a small number of people. And the intelligence-based initiatives that we're currently exploring are helping us to focus our efforts where they're going to do the most good. Um, and, and we're happy to be a part of it. Um, in the digital age and the instantaneous sharing of information, we're at the Sheriff's Department, in a, we're enabling our uh, fugitive apprehension teams to immediately work on these cases as they're, as they're pushed through. Uh, when a, when a high-risk offender is, is identified and the information is instantaneously given out to all the participating agencies, we're able to immediately assign a team uh, to go out and start looking for that person. Uh, and like the chief mentioned earlier, not give them the opportunity to reoffend. So uh, I think it's a it's a great deal, and, and we're happy to be a part of it. And I thank you for having us here today. Thank you. Thank you, Captain. And, and it is important to note of the of the nearly 50 serious repeat offenders who have been identified through the real time crime centers uh, process. The collective conviction rate on those nearly 50 offenders is about 13 percent, which is indicative. Uh, of a system that clearly has not been working as intended to this point. Uh, and it's one of the reasons why you can hear from all of the law enforcement partners just how excited they are about the approach that, the, that our district attorney has taken to ensure that for these serious offenders, the folder does not end up in the middle or the bottom uh, of, of, a, of a stack of cases to be prosecuted, but is always sitting at the top receiving the highest priority that it needs to receive. As other speakers have noted, we're encouraged to have the Federal Bureau of Investigation as a partner in this effort, supporting and standing us alongside our local law enforcement and prosecutors. As you can imagine, offenders' activity sometimes crosses state lines, and there are certain types of crimes that can be prosecuted and should be prosecuted in the federal system. The FBI is thus a very critical, crucial partner uh, in the alert team. So here now to speak is FBI Special in Agent in Charge Terry Wade. Thank you and good afternoon. As been mentioned, has been mentioned before, Albuquerque, like a lot of major cities across the country, have seen a spike in crime in the last couple of years, particularly violent crime. The reasons for that are varied and still under, uh, still being studied. But what we do know for certain is that cooperative and collaborative law enforcement responses are absolutely critical to addressing these issues. Federal, state, and local agencies must partner together and work to disrupt criminal activity. As was mentioned before, all of our agencies have limited resources. By combining our limited intelligence and investigative capabilities, we're able to force multiply and target the most serious offenders. The Albuquerque Police Department certainly recognizes that and I applaud them for leading this effort and thinking outside of the box and thinking of different ways that we can make our community safe. The men and women of the FBI here locally are proud to be a part of this effort, and we know that it can and will make a difference in our community. So if you are an habitual offender out there watching this, I would tell you that now is a good time for career change. We will be out there, we'll be aggressive, and we'll make a difference. Thank you.